YouTube, it's Astro, and I'm coming at you guys with the first episode of the Tekken Academy, my so-called help guide for the newbie of Tekken. Um, this is something that I've actually been wanting to do for a really long time, um, basically since before the game came out, since like the first beta test, because I've had a lot of questions from people asking me about how to get into Tekken, what are things that I should be learning, and I figured instead of regurgitating the same thing to all of my friends and mutuals, I can just make short form content videos that will allow them to learn and then give them something to rewatch, and then if they have more specific questions, they can ask me, you know, on Twitter or on stream or whatever the case may be. Um, so I'm hoping that in making these I can help not just my friends but you guys as well who might be new to the game and looking for ways to get into it um, I wanted to make this closer to the beginning of the game so it was a little bit more relevant but I also wanted to make sure that I had full confidence in what I was talking about so um, I have a lot of hours in the game now I think I'm sitting at about like 2 30 I need a job um, but I I'd feel comfortable enough now to really talk about these topics and dive into them and really see like and feel out like the right way to teach things so um with that if you guys like the content make sure you guys like comment and subscribe would really appreciate that helps out the channel a lot and um yeah you know what i'm saying we'll try and keep these short and sweet we're gonna give you guys the topic um what we hope to accomplish with the video and how to improve the said topic and then we'll give you guys some drills if applicable that you can do in training mode or look over and replace to really help hone in on what you can do to fix your issue so with that we'll go ahead and we'll get straight into the video catch y'all in a second something you've never witnessed before so we are here today to talk about movement in the game and a lot of people are going to be thinking why movement first and i will tell you why honestly i feel like movement is a very underrated topic because it is so complex in this game right there's so many different things that go into when you should sidestep when you should not sidestep when to duck when to back dash when to be you know aggressive and push forward i think that it's something that if you cover it early and you get the concept in your brain you can start building off of it as you improve as a tekken player which is what I wish someone would have done for me because honestly, I've been playing Tekken since Tekken 3 when I was really young. And of course, I didn't care back then. I didn't even start caring about fundamentals even until the beginning of Tekken 7, right? But without having that concept of how to move, it's possible that you will struggle a lot very early. And having that movement might allow you to excel early even as well, giving you the ability to do things like know when you can sidestep how to sidestep, when to backdash, when to dash block, things of that nature, right? So that's what I wanna start with, and I feel like this is a good fundamental starting point to get yourself into a Tekken game. So, starting from the top, the first thing I wanna talk about is defensive movement, which is essentially what I'm gonna call the section four when you want to get away, when you wanna move backwards, right? So a lot of situations arise where I see people trying to use the Korean backdash, right? Everybody knows it, large memes, right? Korean backdash, that's all, that's all Tekken players do, right? And using it in situations and getting sniped for it, even though you might be holding backwards, right? And why is it that I'm, you know, I'm backdashing away and, you know, I'm still getting launched. A common situation this occurs with is with Lee, with this sequence right here. Check this out. So it's down forward one, down three, hit man two, okay? Now, if I try to backdash here, you see me, I'm free and backdashing, I get launched because there's a point where I'm not blocking, you know, I'm not blocking, right? So right there, sometimes you can get sniped, very possibly. If you're trying to Korean and backdash and you, you end up on your frames just align wrong, right? This can happen where you just get, you'll get clipped and you will get launched, right? Happens way more often than you'd think. So the clean the thing is when you're moving defensively Korean backdashing is a grandmaster level technique all the top players do it everybody uses it almost at every level so the problem with it is is that you have this great grandmaster level technique but you're not applying it right right so when it comes to movement in situations like that there's certain times where you should be backdashing 
there are certain times where you should just be blocking. In situations like this, if Lee is pressuring me hard and I just want to get away, in situations like this in close quarters, I just want to block, right? I just want to block. Just, just hold back. There's no way I get hit by this sequence if I hold back. Now, of course, Lee can do another low, but you know, at that point, we're talking offense versus defense. If your goal is to retreat and you're in a threatening range for your opponent's character to be able to hit you, you guys have to start thinking in terms of matchups and not just, ah, I Korean backdash every day and my friends always whiff, my second Dan friends always whiff, right? You need to understand that people are going to have game plans and people are going to look. And honestly, there's some people who are, when you get to higher levels, they're going to start adjusting to what you're doing. So if you see that your opponent is backdashing all the time, sometimes throwing out a long range mid like hitman 2 or like a huang back three or you know a lot of characters have them isn't a bad idea to try and catch somebody moving wrong so what i always say is is you want to kind of have an idea of your opponent's character's range and when they can affect you right so in a range of about right here which would be like right range two i would say you want to kind of just be on guard block crouch block things like that and when you start to get more towards range 2.5 to 3 not a lot of characters have anything to teach you here. so you're free to backdash move away sidestep all that other stuff right so just take note of your distance and how threatening the opponent's character is to you to try and mitigate your uh openings to being hit right because remember the goal is to move backwards you're gonna do that whether you're holding back or whether you're backdashing, right? So, um, I would go over the Korean backdash, but there's like half a billion guides on YouTube. If you guys want to, you guys can go look one of them up. I know that there's a ton and they will be just as helpful to you as I would be. So, there is that. There's a 150 different ways to do it, whether you're doing it, you know, you know back quarter circle back or you know the way that i like to do it if you look at my inputs it's back down back 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 down back back um however you may want to do it there's a million ways right but the important part here is the application of how we use it and a lot of the time too you can use it if your opponent's swinging too wild you can use it to create space to make them whip to be able to hunt right so you want to make sure that you're using the application properly. This is meant not to necessarily clear you across the screen, but meant to make it so your opponent whips to create space quickly so that you can use your movement to create offense, right? And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the sidestep section too, as you can manipulate your frames to almost kind of make your opponent think that, oh, it's my turn, and then you punish them for it, right? Defensive movement is very, very, very simple. Um, my philosophy is on it though. Make sure, like I said, keep an eye on your opponent the range which i'm going to keep saying that because it is extremely extremely important that you monitor how your opponent can affect you at different ranges to make sure that you mitigate the amount of times you can get hit or open yourself up to being lost right another thing too is i see a lot of players that aren't and these are relative like these aren't necessarily new balcony breaks have been in tekken forever but stage hazards are extremely powerful in this game and I find that not a lot of people, especially new players, are mindful enough of stage hazards where they're at. I mean, I was just playing yesterday and I'm playing in blue ranks on Lee. And I had a uh, Azucena player literally put her back to the exploding wall on Midnight Season. She lost the round because she got launched into it, right? So just making sure that you're mindful of stage houses and things like that when you're moving defensively don't back yourself into a corner it's the same thing as like a street fighter you don't want to give up too much space back dashing all the way back here does you zero good all i'm doing is allowing lee to run up to me and further put me to the wall right so make sure that you're keeping in mind where you're at on the screen as well to make sure that you keep yourself safe like you're trying to it so, the next section that we're going to talk about is going to be offensive movement. How do I close the gap on my opponent safely and effectively? And I can show you exactly how to do that. Now, I'm going to go over the more generic way, and this is going to work for basically every character, and that's going to be dash blocking, right? 
so literally a lot of you know this if you're you know anime players a lot of people know about this just literally dash and block dash and block dash and block right keeps you safe it allows you to encourage your opponent to press buttons maybe you could force a miss to try and allow to try and allow you to create offense right if i'm dash blocking from about this range you can trick people into thinking oh i'm coming in oh, oh hold on right you can make them think oh i'm coming in right and then punish them right so allowing yourself to move as well safely and even if you get clipped right even if you get in too close and you don't expect it you're dash blocking so you will make sure that you're right block so that you don't get hit right so that's gonna be the more generic way as well as i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure that dash blocking realigns you um i play a character with a wave dash mainly i play Huarang, so my character has a wave dash so i never really think about this but um i'm pretty sure that if lee starts doing this i should be able to dash block to realign with him. yes so you see you're realigning that allows you to stay in front of your opponent to keep yourself from going off axis and one of your buttons with him, right so that's going to be the first way the second way is through wave dashing and the most important thing i want to say about wave dashing is i know you guys see a lot of people playing and they'll do like stuff like this they'll wave dash like six times in their opponent's face and you know it'll be like this cool it'll be a mishima player and they'll they just wave dash just into a 50 50 and the opponent will get clapped and it's Oh my gosh i need to go do that and then you go do it in your red or orange or even purple rank game and it doesn't work right what i'm going to say about this at first is that when you are using the wave dash you should not be using it as a mix-up tool if your opponent does not allow you to right if you're playing against a lower level opponent and you notice that they're pressing a lot of buttons wave dash pressure is going to do nothing for you as a matter of fact a lot of the time wave dash pressure isn't even really to scare your opponent right is to change the timing on your 50 50 with like a hell sweep and your mid you know i'm just speaking in terms of mishima players but also it's to quickly realign you with the opponent so when you see this right no matter where lee goes huang is gonna follow him right with the wave dash right so this is the main thing, right? Because a lot of the time, Mishima's, everybody knows for the most part, Mishima's, you want to step, I believe it's, you step them to the left. So a lot of people will literally just get up and walk that way so that they don't have to deal with the mix up or try to force the mix up to whip so that they can punish, right? So you mitigate that by using the wave dash to keep realigning yourself so that you can make sure that you don't whip right keep yourself safe like i said a lot of the time when i talk about movement my philosophy is you want to try to be as aggressive as possible while still keeping yourself safe right and that is going to lead us into the next section which is going to be using sidesteps offensively right so what a lot of people don't know is even though there's a lot of there's sometimes where moves are minus right there's moves are minus and usually that means your turn's over but what a lot of people don't know about tekken is is that there's usually a sweet spot and it's between plus three to minus three where you can actually still move offensively to force your opponent to do something right so let's try and look at this um let's see oh here we go so we have him set to stand block and punish and the punish we're going to use is we're going to say lee's going to down forward one right so huarang's forward two is minus two right so if lee does a down forward one and i try to do like i yeah so if i try to do basically anything i think i oh we trade there but um if i try to do anything i'm basically your minus two it's really hard to try and ensure like enforce your gameplay right so if i try to down for one after this i'm gonna get stuck right so what you can do what people say is like i said we're in that sweet spot you want to think of this sweet spot right is you can still move here right so a lot of the time you think okay a minus two my turn's over i gotta block but what you can also do is minus two sidestep right using using the negative frames to your advantage right because you know if your opponent knows oh that's a minus move my turn if they swing too wild without thinking about it 
forward two, sidestep, and then you can actually punish off this. Oops. Oops. If you're good at the game. There we go. So, right, it's possible to launch punish your opponent for trying to take their turn back if they don't think about what they're doing, right? And so this is important because this can help you out offensively as well. Oh, damn. That is... There we go. So I think you got to sidewalk a little bit. But but essentially, the thing stays the same. If you're in that kind of sweet spot, you can use side steps to your advantage to try and keep pushing. And then when you start doing things like this and making your opponent think about it... Oops. If I can do it again. Lead down forward one is really good. If you can get your opponent to start thinking about when to press a button after you sides, after like, you know, like when to press a button after you lose frames, essentially, that's when you can start doing different things, like, right? Because then eventually your opponent's gonna get tired of getting sidestepped and maybe they start doing like homing moves, right? Right? So they're doing homing moves now because they don't want you to sidestep. Right? Makes sense. But now, because you did that, now I win here. So it's all it's all a mind game. And using your frames and your movement to understand what type of reactions you can force out of your opponent. Right? And using that is one of the strongest mechanics I believe any Tekken player can master. And especially early, because people are going to start thinking of, especially when you start getting into the red ranks, purple ranks, people are going to start thinking about, okay, hey, this is minus two, it's my turn, let me take my turn back. But when you start doing things like, okay, maybe I use a move that's minus two or minus three, but I know that I can sidestep and duck to maybe avoid a high, or maybe I can just sidestep and throw out a launcher to try and see if I can force a whip. That's when you start playing the meta game of, okay, look, it's your turn but how are you going to respond to what I might do? And that's how you can use movement to create offense as well, even in unfavorable situations. And now for the closing section, the question that I know a lot of you guys are gonna be thinking is like, okay, well, Astro, how do I improve my movement? How do I get better at maneuvering the screen and keeping myself safe and being aggressive with it? Well, Unfortunately, unlike most other things, there's not really any specific type of drill that I can give you um, that can really like showcase exactly, oh, this is how you move, this is how you do this. Um, except for the thing that I just showed you, right, with the uh, being able to check and see which direction you can go. But like I said, remember, it's character to character. Some things track left, some things track right. So it's not going to be the same situation like I was saying before. You're not going to be able to auto, I'm not going to be able to just do forward to step left right and oh leads down forward one to misses so everything's gonna miss that's not the case there's gonna be moves that are going to track to the left that if i do down forward two or forward two side step left i'm still gonna get hit right so it's something that you're gonna have to build on a character to character basis but what i want you to be aware of is having the knowledge that you can make that type of thing happen so maybe you run into a matchup where you go okay let me try this and i'm gonna try and go so i'll go forward two let me try and step left okay well they did a jab or a down forward one and it hit me this way so maybe next time i'll do the same thing but i'll step right right just kind of having that just be experimented right don't be afraid to lose trying something new that's the best thing i can tell you is that tekken is a lot a lot a lot a lot of learning but that's the fun of the game as well because when you look and you find something that works and you can use it and you master it that's when you really start playing the game and that's when you'll really start to see your improvements skyrocket when you stop worrying about the number when you stop worrying about the win loss column when you start worrying about the png underneath your name that's when you will start to see your improvement go to the moon right stop worrying about losing keep trying new stuff keep trying to improve and that's what's important right but Another way that we can talk about improving as I gone on my tangent another way we can talk about improving our movement is to use the replay feature, right? I See that a lot of people go into the replay, but they don't really look at anything they just see like oh I got hit by this Why did I get hit right use use the time if you have a game? Maybe 
just go through and just look at how you maneuver this screen right look at how you move how do you back dash how do you move forward do you dash block do you sidestep a lot do you side walk a lot right when you're pressuring your opponent in your in their face right do you sometimes try to incorporate side steps to try and avoid their retaliation right right keep in mind how you can use movement and then when you're in when you're in the replays and sometimes something hits you or maybe you're minus and you get hit by something click in on it and say oh hey well i was minus three here can i sidestep left can i sidewalk right right incorporate these questions into your thinking as you look into your replays and that'll also help you a lot with your movement and then next time you maybe recognize oh hey I played against Anina yesterday and I looked and when I did uh, when I did down forward one, I was only minus one, but I tried to step left, Nina's jab hit me. I stepped right in the replay and it missed. Use that to your advantage, right? Use that and try to build off that. And basically it's like a library. Keep increasing your knowledge and eventually you'll be Tekken, you'll be God of Destruction. I almost said Tekken God Prime. You'll get God of Destruction in no time, all right? But remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint, okay? Keep working, keep practicing, and hopefully I will see you guys back next time. Have a good one, y'all.